Thank you, Rachel, uh, for um, organising today's webinar. Uh, we're just going to um, we're just going to uh, wait a couple of minutes until everyone that's registered for today's webinar is um, logged in, and I can see already they uh, are um, are pouring in, which is good. Well, I think we've got a uh, a really good number of people registered for today's webinar. It's not hard, is it, when the subject matter is French Polynesia and the islands of Bali. Um, for those who haven't been there, make sure you make the effort and get there. It has to be on the bucket list. For those of us who've been fortunate over the years to go there, it's a the sort of place we always dream of returning to. Um, so, yeah, so we're just uh, waiting for another little while just before everyone uh, rolls in. Um, this is uh, a great webinar today, co-hosted with our friends from Mariner Boating Holidays, uh, Trevor and Maggie and Sarah. And today we're very fortunate to have uh, joining us uh, Stephanie Betts, who's a longtime friend of ours who lives in Hapiete in uh, Tahiti and uh, is a, a uh, definitely one of the most um, probably one of the best tourist advocates for French Polynesia. Many, many years of living over there and, uh, and cruising and sailing around, but I'll let Trevor talk more about that as we move along. Next. So uh, our next webinar will be uh, on the 26th of August. And as uh, many of you would know at the moment, we've uh, since COVID started, the rubber band snap and the demand for new yachts and secondhand yachts has been incredible and what that is causing is for people to find the right yacht it's not necessarily in the local marina sometimes that yacht will be overseas uh, Patrick Gillo who is our brokerage manager is very experienced at helping people purchase a yacht that might not be in local waters so he's going to come on and have a very good talk about how to buy a yacht that is overseas so that'll be on the 26th of August and as we always say with our webinars, if you have missed a webinar and you want to go and watch one, you can go to the Multi Hole Solutions or Yacht Sales Co. YouTube channel. And on that YouTube channel, you'll find um, playlists. And in the playlist, you'll find all of our previous webinars, which we started at the start of COVID back in March or April of uh, 2020. So that's where you can go. And there's a lot of resource there now that's available on all different subject matter. So it's a, a very good place to go and find something to watch. Next. Okay, so as we always do with our webinars, if you want to ask any questions, please just type it in the uh, Q&A uh, box, which you'll see at the uh, somewhere on your screen, you'll see Q&A. And if you type your question, we will then either answer it immediately if it's uh, relevant to where we're up to in the presentation, we'll interrupt and say that we've got a, a, a pertinent question or we'll hold it over for a Q&A session at the end. So don't be upset if your question doesn't get answered straight away, but we will endeavor to answer all the questions at the Q&A session at the end. Next. Hey, myself, Greg Boller. I'm the New York Sales Manager for Multi Health Solutions. And I've been hosting uh, our webinar series since we started them. And in the background, Rachel, Rachel Crook, who is our marketing manager, who does a terrific job of um, putting together the presentations and organizing the, the, uh, the webinars each, each month. And uh, it's good to have Rachel with us again today. Next. Okay, so some of you might not have met Trevor and Sarah or Maggie yet, uh, or have watch one of their webinars, but they are always very entertaining webinars. Uh, and they are incredibly experienced and knowledgeable about some of the greatest sailing locations on earth. Uh, so far, we've spoken to them about sailing in Turkey. We've had a presentation from them about sailing on the, the islands of Greece and Turkey. And I have known Trevor for many, many years, back from when I uh, operated Sunsail, the charter bo uh, boat company in the Asia Pacific. That was when I was fortunate enough to often be going across to French Polynesia. And I would always accidentally find Trevor there at the same time, hosting some. <laughs> it's one of the places where any excuse will do. So, uh, so Trevor and Sarah are going to uh, help present today with Stephanie. And as always, Maggie's in the background managing uh, 
uh, things from their end. So thank you all for uh, presenting today. And now I'm going to hand over to you, Trevor. Thank you so much, uh, Greg and uh, Rachel. It is indeed a pleasure to be back. And obviously with this particular subject, it's an even bigger pleasure. I have to say that uh, my first trip to Tahiti was in 1999. It was exploratory on a, uh, on a, um, a famil familiarization. And our host in Tahiti was in fact, Stephanie Betts. Out of uh, that exploration, we came up with uh, the Tahiti Yacht Rally and uh, Stephanie came up with the Tahiti Pearl Regatta. She has her own business now in Papieti called uh, the, the um, Archipelagos. And she is the, I'm gonna say my only French word today, she is the organisatrice, organisatrice. It's very difficult to get around, but that's manager. Anyway, Stephanie is gonna talk about the generalities uh, of sailing in Tahiti. She knows it backwards. She once told me that she sailed down to the, to the Society Islands um, single-handed from Tuamotu, I think, Stephanie, without a compass. Is that correct? Over. No, I had a compass. Oh, you had I a had compass. A compass. <laughs> and a GPS. <laughs> Good. Okay, it's over to you, Steph. Okay, Yaorana, which means hello in Tahitian. So I'm very pleased to be there. Thank you all who invited me to this webinar. And I'm pleased to talk about those beautiful islands of French Polynesia. So on the map, you can see French Polynesia and it's five archipelagos. It's as big as Europe. So it's really a huge playground for sailing. If you come by boat from Panama, you're gonna reach first the Marquesas, which are high mountain, uh, islands, then you go to the Tuamotu, it's four or 500 miles from the Marquesas, and then it's only atolls, it's a coral reef surrounding the island, and nothing in the middle, only a lagoon, so only a coral reef. And then you come to the Society Island, which is mixed age, means that there is still an island in the middle, but there is already an atoll, a coral reef surrounding our islands in the Society Island. So it's really five different environments in those archipelago, five different landscape and five different sailing conditions. Next. You have to understand one word in French Polynesia, very important word is Moana, the ocean. It is the emblem and the essential element in the origin of the Polynesian life and culture. The migration that started 2000 years ago from Asia to French Polynesia, and then those Polynesian people with outrigger sailing canoe, they conquest the entire, they conquest and put population on the entire Polynesian triangle. The Polynesian flag is also linked to the ocean, Moana, as it represents an outrigger sailing canoe, the five archipelagos. The tradition, the calendar, the fishing calendar is linked to Moana. And Polynesian people, uh, for them, Moana is so much part of the Polynesian lifestyle. Um, they did migration, they, they navigated with their outrigger canoe, without compass, <laughs> without GPS, only by the stars and looking at the clouds and the swell. So the Polynesian people, they are the one who invented the catamaran and they sailed through the South Pacific by the star this way. Next. So there is three main archipelago for sailing because most of the time you're gonna come from Panama or Galapagos or west coast of the US through Marquesas, then Tuamotu, and then the Society Island. We have a marine tropical climate and the temperature all year long is between 24 and 30 degrees Celsius. So warm water and hair is warm all year long. We've got only two seasons, the Austral winter that is from um, May, April, May to October, and then the Austral summer from October to March. The wind is always east. It's a trade wind from east. It could be northeast in the winter, in the summer and southeast in the winter, but it's always east. So it makes navigation very easy. 
We have a long swell from southeast if there are depression in the big south of the, 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 hemisphere, the, the South Pacific, and then the rolling swell from east when it's windy. But windy here will be 30 knots, 25 knots, so we don't have real big strong depression. And if there is a depression, we can see it arriving because the trade wind from east start to pass north and then west, and then we know that depression is arriving. And we've got something special, only in the society island, you have to forget about the lunar tide. You have to think about the solar tide because uh, Tahiti and the society island are exactly in the middle of the South Pacific. And that's what we call an amphidromic point. So we are not influenced by the moon tide, but only by the sun tide. So in the society island, the tide will be high every day of the year at noon and midnight and low at six in the morning and six in the afternoon. And the tide range is only 20 centimeters. Next. For me, the best, the, yeah, my favorite richness in French Polynesia are the people. They are smiling people, happy people, singing people. When you come, they, they will greet you with flowers. They're, they are happy people. They're happy to live there and, and you can feel that. So do not hesitate during your trip in French Polynesia to go and meet with this population. That could be by going to the church or going and play petanque game with them or going fishing with some others, but meet with this population. They are really extraordinary. Next. So sure, the pe people are something, but the landscape and the environment is also one of uh, the good part of Tahiti. Uh, We've got 99% of water in our territory, so you can have plenty of water activities such as surfing, fishing, windsurfing, kite surfing. We see a lot of foils now, diving, and obviously sailing. So that's why we recommend people to come and visit our islands by boat, because this is for me the best way to get the mana, the spirit of French Polynesia. So going by boat to see the islands and to travel in between the islands, but for me, the boat is also the way to go ashore, the way to do activities ashore and to meet with this culture. Um, this is a more than a, a century um, culture and they've got a lot to share and a lot and they like to share it. But there are also activities for tourists such as golf, four wheel drive tours, museum, markets, spa, restaurants, um, and more. So do not hesitate to use your boat to go ashore and discover the richness and the activities on land. Next. As I said, Moana, the ocean is our principal richness, but it's also the way that people live with, because this marine environment provides us with food, pearls, tourism, ecological source of energy, so we have to protect it. We have clear water, turquoise lagoon, it's just gorgeous. And we've got more than 800 marine species. Some of them are protected and you have to follow the rules and, and be careful with those uh, environment, this marine environment. Um, sim simple rules to follow, like mountain eagle rays, turtle, sharks, they are protected. So you can fish them, you can touch them. Same for the shells. If you see pretty shell on, on sandy bottom, you can look at it, but don't touch it and don't bring it back. Uh, you can learn more. We've got some tools uh, you're gonna see at the end of this webinar, some link to some uh, of our website to get to know more about this. Next. And so this lagoon must be protected. The major danger is pollution, plastic and garbages that are floating and then get inside our lagoon. So in the lagoon, we recommend you to moor on sandy bottom only and not on coral heads. You can, as I said, admire the underwater flora and fauna, but don't touch it. Inside the lagoon, do not ex um, exceed five knots speed, otherwise you're gonna damage the, the littoral. Uh, we've got some places with um, marine protection uh, restriction and a UNESCO biosphere in the Tuamotu. There are educational marine area in the Marquesas. Those marine area are managed by, by the children of the schools in the villages. 
And uh, since last year, there are restricted marine area and conditions in Bora Bora. We're going to see that in details later on. Next. So as I said, Society Island Marquesas Tuamutu, this is three totally different sailing experiences. Next. The Society Island, where most of you will come if you charter boats, uh, that's where most of the charter companies are located. And this is a great sailing area because the islands are very close to each other, only 20 miles in the open sea before you get back inside the lagoon. There are two groups of islands in the Society Island. Well, actually, you know, they call it Society Island because the people are so social that that's why they give this name to the Society Island because of the way people are. So the Windward Islands, this is Tahiti, Morea, and Tetiaroa, and the Leeward Island, Raiyatea, Taha, Wahine, and Bora Bora, and Maupiti. It's a very easy sailing area, except for Maupiti, where the pass can be sometimes kind of uh, challenging. As I said, in the Society Island, we have no moon tide, so uh, there are large pass, and, and so there is no current inside the pass because there is no tide. So it's very easy to sail in and out through the pass. Very efficient system of markers. If you follow the rules, you won't get on the sand or on the reef. It's very well made. And we're gonna see in details that it's a different kind of markers that you are used to, but you get to use them very easily. And sailing inside the lagoon, you're gonna be protected from the swell and the sea by the coral reef. And then you sail inside something like a lake that is turquoise water, and then you can see the bottom because it's very shallow and clear. Um, there are in those islands of the Society Island, many marinas, yacht facilities, anchorages, and a lot of sheltered bays. Next. So I was talking to you about the markers in the Society Island, when you get inside the lagoon through the pass, you've got the green and red port side and starboard as usual. But as soon as you are inside the lagoon, you forget about port side and starboard. You only think reef side and island side. And you're gonna have a red marker between you and the land and a green marker between you and the reef. So you always have to stay in between those. And if there is an isolated danger, then there will be a cardinal mark. Next. Um, so that's the, the Society Island, the Windward Island, with the famous uh, Tetiaroa Atoll, uh, the only atoll of the Society Islands, actually. And this is the atoll that is famous because of Marlon Brando and this more than five star hotel uh, that has been built on it. Uh, in Tahiti, you're going to find very nice spot, and it's also famous in Tahiti Iti for surfing uh, and the wave of Chopo. And actually we win to be the place for the next uh, Olympic games for surfing that will be in Tahiti. We are very proud of that. Next. So in Tahiti, you'll see most of the people, they come to Papete and then they fly away. But for me, Tahiti is a beautiful island as well. We've got white sand beach and black sandy beach. We've got a lot of excursion to do inland in the mountain and see the waterfalls. We've got very good museum, very interesting museum. We've got a lot of stone temple that are the, the old uh, temple of the Maui people, a market that is full of color and smell and fishes and fruits. So if you have only one day in Papete, you have to go to the market and try your first poisson cru, which is the Tahitian raw fish with coconut milk. Next. And actually in Tahiti, we've got a brand new marina, downtown Papete, so very close to all of the facilities and entertainment of the town, um, with uh, 80 spots uh, available and 10 for um, super yachts. Uh, well maintained, uh, well equipped. Two new restaurants have been uh, opened uh, two months ago inside the marina. So <laughs> this is a nice place to be and to stop if you need to do shopping or fix some stuff on your boat if you are a passing vessel. Next. I just have to find it again. There we go. 
there is another marina, a big marina called Marina Tahina that is in Punaoya. This is uh, 12 kilometers away from Papete. And uh, there you can have um, facilities and services. And there is a big supermarket just nearby. Um, and, but, but you have to pre-book because it's uh, quite uh, used and um, it's better to pre-book if you want to have a burst there when you arrive. Going well, Stephanie, just if you can hear me there. Um, yeah. Very informative and uh, very clear. So Thank you. you know, I just need to explain to everyone the reason Stephanie's camera was off. So it's not that Stephanie didn't want to be seen today. It's just that we were having a little bit of a problem with the uh, quality of the internet connection from, uh, from uh, French Polynesia today. So we're just doing it with her camera off and it's working perfectly. Thank you, Greg. Um, Maggie, you can go to the next one. So as I said in Papete, the market is one place you really have to visit if you want to buy some handicraft and meet with these people because the market, it opens at five in the morning. That's the best moment to go there. And it's really um, um, a way to see the people and see their way of life and their happiness. It's, it's people are singing in the market. Uh, it's really a place you should go and just the smell of the flowers over there. Next. Uh, Manava Resort in Papete, maybe Trevor, you wanna say more about that? One minute, we just need to unmute Trevor. Just uh, wait. Yes, one minute. okay. Can there you hear go. now? Yep. Okay. Uh, the Manava is uh, in Papieti. It's not a six star hotel, but it's very friendly and has had a lot of the external area redeveloped. It's the hotel that you will arrive at traveling with us actually the day before you left. Australia because of the dateline and the fact that you arrive at 12 o'clock at night so you can't go anywhere that day. But the beautiful thing about the Manavar also is its uh, infinity pool which looks uh, straight across to neighbouring Morea. And one of the interesting things that uh, I discovered about Morea is that it operates uh, or the shortest scheduled airline service in the world. The, the voyage on the plane from Papieti to Morea is seven and a half minutes. So they don't do much cabin service on the way. Next. I'm having trouble with my remote. There we go. When we go up to Reatea for the boarding of the fleet for our rally, which is an all catamaran affair, catamarans, of course, come into their own in uh, Tahiti because uh, there are no ports, really, and uh, catamarans have the privacy, the stability, the comfort uh, that uh, you need in the, the situation where you don't get off on, on the boat with great frequency. Yes, next. So the rally route that we will follow actually uh, includes by boat three of the Leeward, Leeward group. Hang on, it's just something we have a, just go back Maggie. Um, sorry about that folks. Uh, these are the four islands of the Leeward group of the Society Islands. And uh, the base is in Uturoa, the one at the top of Reatea you see there, where all the marinas are. There are two marinas there. One of them has two slipways for any private yacht that needs uh, lifting. And there are also plenty of facilities there. There are plenty of shopping, supermarkets, etc in the town and in fact the marina we use is uh, walking distance from the town. Next. 
We've, now we've got a problem here again. I've got a message on my screen saying start my video. No, it's okay. It's all good. Just while we're waiting on that, so um, Rayatea and Taha are basically both enclosed by the same uh, lagoon, which is a really Just good thing when you're, when you're picking up your uh, yachts and starting out, you, you don't have to immediately go out of the lagoon and across and do a crossing. You can explore all within oh, the really one lagoon for the here. first day or two. You see what the... Okay. So Hi. just down on the bottom left there, we should okay. be Okay, found go. it again. Beautiful. Okay. So, Sorry, um, guys, this thing is jumping all over the place. Right. So as uh, Greg just said, uh, Rautia and uh, Taha are within the same uh, reef system. And uh, there's a good illustration of the bits you should stay on within the lagoon, the blue bits. Stay away from the brown bit that you can see on the right there and stay away even from the light blue. Sometimes you have enough water there to anchor, but the water within the lagoon itself, as you see on the left-hand picture, can be quite uh, deep. Generally, it's 200, 300, up to maybe a kilometre wide, but not much more than that. And as Greg also said, or I think Stephanie said, the water inside the lagoon it's just like a lake. And, and Trevor, uh, just to be clear, that picture we were looking at then was uh, Uteroa, wasn't it? Which we can see here in this picture. Yes, place. correct. And here is the marina in Uteroa where the base is. There's the airport, the runway at the airport. That's the lagoon across to um, Taha on the bottom left picture. There are some cruise ships that operate in uh, Tahiti, thankfully not too many of the big ones, but they have a nice facility for these ships in Raiatea that come maybe every week. And as I said to you before, the uh, centre of town is walking distance from the marina of the operator that we use in uh, Raiatea. Yep, same again. Um, one of the things we do in the marina uh, when we arrive is uh, have the crew of the marina, the staff of the marina put on a beautiful uh, barbecue and uh, dancing with themselves. It's not orchestrated, it's not programmed, and uh, it's very, very natural and a lovely way to begin your experience in uh, Tahiti. This is the um, chart of Raiatea. Raiatea itself is not really, well, it's not circumnavigable within the reef. You can go safely down the eastern side between Raiatea and Taha, and you can go in and out down the western side, but you can't really go in one pass and out the other. What we do on our trip plan for October 2022 is go down the eastern side to a very famous sacred site where we will spend the night and uh, look at the, this very special place where the canoes used to leave on these expeditions south and west, eventually, of course, into the Polynesian Triangle to um, New Zealand and uh, Tonga. Well, actually, Trevor, this Marae Taputapuatea is the more sacred site of all the Polynesian Triangle. Okay. And each Marae, because that's where they first arrived. So this is the ah. biggest one. For them, this is the sacred one. And people from New Zealand, from Hawaii, come to this Marae Taputapuatea to take a stone of this Marae to get the spirit, the mana, in their own Marae. But this one, they, they say that this is the hurt of the, these octopus that represent the Polynesian Triangle. Well, that's fantastic. Thanks uh, for that, Steph. I wasn't really aware that that was the case at two directions. But it was the, or was it the place where many of those expeditions left from to go to yes. the south? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. okay, next. The Marai Marai. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, 
Uh, now we go north up the inside of the reef following the lagoon to Taha, and it's only a few miles. But the challenge that you will see about sailing Taha is actually circumnavigating the island inside the reef. A little bit of navigating, but it's frankly quite easy. What's the trick, of course, is that the wind will be uh, from the right, then from behind, and then a jibe, and then from the left and down the other side. Our destination on that day will be the Taha Island Resort, which is an overwater uh, establishment, but we anchor there. That's the bottom right picture. I think there's another one coming. Um, you anchor there on the reef, and it, it's quite beautiful with Bora Bora there in the background. Next. Yes, so here is uh, Taha uh, joined to Reatea, of course, but we come up the eastern side, which uh, is uh, quite wide and safe from the breeze, just on your right hand, right shoulder. And catamarans love it, just love it when the breeze there is usually quite strong. A little bit of a navigational challenge at the top, and then down the other side, which is also a challenge. The uh, resort is actually where the blue dot is, and there's a coral garden uh, next to that hotel. We go there because it's uh, it's it's up it's an upmarket resort, and frankly, I couldn't afford to stay there. But they've given us wonderful service over the years. They do a beautiful meal and enable a little bit of indulgence as part of the rally program. Next. And have, have supplied towels when we've had oh, to yes. go ashore <laughs> in a storm. Yes, yes. <laughs> How wonderful. Now, on the lay day, of course, that we have in Taha, there's every opportunity for uh, expedition on the land. Um, you get in one of these little buses, you can go to a vanilla farm, and vanilla is quite an extraordinary plant. And of course, it is still purchased. And Stephanie, you might know the answer to this. How much of uh, the van vanilla that's used in Coca-Cola comes from Tahiti? I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. But most of the great, the greatest I... chef in the world, they use the, the vanilla from Tahiti, which yes. is different from the Bourbon vanilla. We are, for us, we call it our black gold. Uh -huh. And Taha is really the island of the vanilla. We call it the vanilla island. Yeah. So yeah, there, that's something. And if you come, at the, when you go and visit a, a um, vanilla plantation, it's an orchidee, and then you have to, to do the, the wedding of the flowers to make sure it's going to be growing as a, a vanilla bean. Fantastic. Pollination. Yeah. Next. So on this tour, I mentioned it's just a little excursion in a simple vehicle, nothing grand, but uh, of course there are pearls cultivated, cultured there as well. And on the right is the entrance to the shop where they distill rum. I suggest you go to look at the pearls before you go to the distillery because your judgment might not be so prolific. Uh, after you sample the rum. It's beautiful stuff. Uh, it's behind, well, in my case, I can't see the door, but um, it's, um, it's a nice excursion. As, uh, as Stephanie has said, the place is very spectacular visually. You go right up into the center. It's not, there's no mainstream tourism there. It's all low impact stuff. You can anchor, you can moor, uh, you can go to a different place, you can stay in the anchorage in front of the hotel. It's all your choice. There's uh, basically what I'm talking about. And sooner or later, you're gonna encounter a bunch of guys with uh, their instruments playing the local music. And uh, you might um, be lucky enough to see some Polynesian, dancing done properly uh, 
again, unorchestrated, simple, and by the community, we always see if we can arrange something like that. It is uh, beautiful, beautiful music and dancing. So then uh, we make the passage uh, out through the pass at the south of Taha, turn to the west and go to Bora Bora. Uh, you will recall Bora Bora is the westernmost of that society island group. There is only one entrance into the lagoon at Bora Bora. It's on the western side and the corner where you make the turn is not easy to find. Um, it's a long way away from the land and you can't see it until quite late. So you just have to obey what your GPS tells you to do. Um, they have now within the lagoon of uh, Bora Bora restrictions on where it's possible to anchor. And you should make inquiries if you're on your own uh, about where they are because they are working very hard to preserve the nature of the Bora Bora Lagoon. This is said to be in the place of uh, Bali High in the South Pacific. Actually, I'm not sure that's true, it doesn't matter. The Americans were based there during the war. How lucky would that have been? Um, and uh, the place on the right there is the Bora Bora Yacht Club, hardly what you and I would expect of a yacht club, but we've been there several times. They do a wonderful meal. They are wonderful, friendly people in this very, very spectacular place. Next. Here again, you can anchor on this blue water. It's a sandy bottom if you anchor in the right place. Let me just stop you. It's not allowed to anchor anymore in Bora Bora. Ah, well, but that's why you. they put moorings. They have put Android moorings around the island. Great. To, uh, avoid anybody to anchor because they want to protect their coral heads. Very good. Thank you. I wasn't aware of that because of COVID, because I haven't been to Bora Bora for yeah, it's it's since only since last year, Trevor. Yep, thank you so much. But um, you know, when you sit around in these places and look at the sky, especially around about sunset, you can you have to pinch yourself just to be sure that it, it is real. What amazes me there, Trevor, is that on a sunny day, if there's a fluffy cloud like that, the clouds are the same colour as the lagoon from the reflection. Yes, yes. Uh, when there's a bit more cloud than that, actually, yes. the, the more cloud there is capping the mountain, the greener is the cloud on the underside reflecting. It is quite extraordinary. It is possible there within the lagoon on the eastern side to swim with the manta rays. Uh, in a particular place, you have to be there at a particular time. It's not guaranteed that you will see a manta ray, but uh, it's very safe snorkeling along. And if one comes along, you just bless yourself because it's quite a spectacular experience. They're only about three meters wide, um, but uh, they are most graceful. Next. So then in this instance, because it's upwind, to Huahini, we uh, give the boats back to the operator in Bora Bora and we fly to Huahini. And if you check the coordinates from uh, uh, Richard Howe's book about Captain Cook, you will see that he anchored on 1671 South and 15103 West. And that puts him right in the middle of that entrance to the port of Fare on Wahini. Um, the airport is just across uh, to the left. And in Wahini, we stay next, we stay in a hotel with another little taste of luxury for the last two nights. Staying in one of these overwater bungalows is just like staying on a catamaran tied to the shore. The only thing is they don't move. Um, so, sorry, we've gone. Uh, oh. No, sorry, Maggie, can, can you go back, please? Why is that happening? Don't know, love. 
anyway, I will continue. Okay, so, so no, this is this is so, sorry, sorry, no. Don't. So this is the island of Wahini. The lagoon is navigable on the western side, um, but there is a beautiful land tour that you can do all around the island. There's an interesting place there, a small stream where the sacred eels live. There's another a sacred site there as well. There is a place called Fare, the town, the main town, where there is in fact a, a Wahini yacht club. Um, and the only fish you can get there is what they caught the previous uh, evening. So then after this two night of luxury, we fly back to Raiatea. Uh, anybody who wants to extend can of course uh, do so. When you get back to Tahiti and you have to get on a plane and leave, you will understand why Captain Bly had the problem when he wanted to leave to take his sailors back to England with their breadfruit trees. They had a mutiny and uh, we've nearly had several over the years. So that's basically what I have to say, although I could talk for another couple of hours about Tahiti. It is just an extraordinary place on this planet. And the most difficult thing you will have to do while you're there is leave. Thank you so much, Greg. Thank you, Rachel. Well, now, we can questions now, if you want. Okay. Now we'll hand back to Stephanie, I think, if we go to the next yeah, slide. Absolutely. We're going to Stephanie for um, Tuamotu. Yeah. Yeah. This no, is the no, next no. slide. Yeah. Sorry, guys. No, you're right. So just hold there for a minute. So that's Wahini still. Yeah, uh, that is, yes. And then uh, if we click on to the next one. Yep. And now we're coming to what I believe is your favorite part of the world, Stephanie. Yeah, actually, I spent almost two years over there with my 26 feet uh, wooden sailing boat, single handing uh, around the island. And that's one of my best uh, adventure in life. So the Marquesas, they are located eight to 10 um, degrees south. So they are really well protected from any depression or hurricane. So we call these those these archipelago our hurricane hole. Um, there's there are steady winds, uh, but they are they, they could impact the um, they could be impacted by the step contour of the island. So even if you are on the windward uh, side of the island, you may get some wind. Aid to navigation are rare because actually that we don't need. Um, Coastline are clearly defined, so you can sail very close to the land. There are no danger. Um, there is sometimes a sea current that could be reinforced in the narrow passage, such as in between uh, Hivaoa and Tawata. I remember spending a day to do three knots with my little sailing boat, tacking and tacking and tacking, and I wasn't able to get it. <laughs> um, the islands are exposed to the swell, uh, but each island are, have somewhere an, um, a, a bay where you can, um, that is sheltering where you can uh, go ashore, but sometimes beach landing can be challenging. Next. Stephanie, um, where can people clear in? Or are you about to mention that? There are two places where they can clear where where they can clear in that are Ivaoa and Nukuhiva. Yep. And and that's the only place where you can find a gendarmerie to be able to clear in. And then once you clear in, then you can travel the rest of the islands of the Marquesas. So Ivaoa is famous because of uh, the the painter uh, Gauguin, but also because of a French singer called Jacques Brel. And you can see on those pictures that the, the, the landscape is totally different from what you've seen in the Tuamotu world, the society island. And it's really a place where you're gonna be reconnected to nature because nature is everywhere and you have to live with her. Next. A lot of culture also in the markets, there's a lot of stone temple and tikis, stone tikis. This is on the first image, you can see the huge bay on Nukuiva, the northern part of uh, the Marquesas. So it's a huge bay. During the COVID, they have accommodated more than 200 boats in the bay. And, and they use, they've got an anti-craft that is really special to the Marquesas where they use uh, stones, wood, um, bones that they're engraved. 
and uh, the, um, the seeds of some um, trees to make um, shells, uh, to make a necklace and uh, jewelry. Next. And then when you sell the, the Marquesas, but if you've got time, honestly, you need to go in each of those islands in the Marquesas because each of them is different. And then you have to sail 400 miles down to the Tuamotu. And then you arrive to paradise on, on earth, uh, gorgeous snorkeling, fishing, diving. The, the Tuamotus are on the atolls, as you can see on the image there. The, the island has totally sink inside the lagoon. So the only thing that is left is this coral reef surrounding the island. That's what we call an atoll. And on these reef surrounding the island, part of it is covered by island that we call Motu and that you can see here and where there is only um, coconut tree and, and, and sand. So if you don't like fish, don't stop to the Tuamotu. Um, <laughs> There, are, there is a shipyard in Apataki, so if you are sitting with your own boat, you can lift the boat in uh, Apataki and even leave, him, leave it there for a couple of months if you need to go back home. And then the Tuamotu are the paradise for black pearl, so if you want to go and visit a pearl farm, you can do that in most of these islands. So and Steph Stephanie, can you, you can fly from Papiete to Apataki, is that correct? Yes, you can fly to Apapete, to Apataki. I think there is three flights per week. Yes. And, you, and out of the 76 islands of the Tuamotu, um, I think half of them have an airport. So yes. it's easy to go, and but the best way is to go by boat, honestly. Yes. <laughs> you have to be more careful. Yeah, yeah. Sailing, there, sailing there is more, more you need to be more... Um, a mariner, you need to have the, the marine sense of sailing. To go through the pass, you have to wait the slack time. If the current is too strong, you'll, you'll be able to get in at the slack time. You need to, there is no markers inside the lagoon, so you need to navigate with the sun above you or behind you to be able to see the coral heads inside the lagoon. So yeah, you need to be more um, accurate with um, Mother Nature and with the ocean when you are in the Tuamotus. Next. Uh, when you sail to the Tuamotu, you won't see the atolls before you are 10 miles away from them because there is no high mountain. So only 10 miles, you can start to see the atolls. You, to go through the pass, you have to observe the moon tide and pass when it, the water is slack or within the entering current. Um, there is a stronger, a strong current in the past, sometimes when the wind from southeast is blowing more than 25 knots, actually the waves of the wind will fill in the lagoon and this water that is inside the lagoon has to go away. And the only way for this water to go away is through the pass. So sometimes there is, for a couple of days, a permanent outgoing current in the pass. That's why you really have to go at the slack time. Um, and then you have to choose carefully your anchorage because if the wind starts to blow and you are on the lee on the lee side of the island, at the end of the island, there's going to be a, a sea inside the la lagoon that will be created by the wind, and so you're going to be at the bad place uh, at the bad moment. So you really have to be careful <laughs> of the weather forecast uh, and the, the sea conditions when you sail in the Tuamotu. And you either you've got a water maker and then you you are the king of the atoll. If you don't, then you have to save water because uh, there are just a few water in the atoll and, and it's not something easy to find. Next. Uh, here are some images of the Tuamotu. Uh, Fakarava, which is a, bio, uh, a biosphere a reserve from UNESCO. And when you see the image, you can understand why. People live really on, on the reef. So the sea is on both sides of their, of their home. And one is on the ocean side and one in, is on the lagoon side. And you see a lot of those little puntoon because all of them, they don't have cars. They've got speedboat to go from one place to the other one. And snorkeling and diving there is uh, the best of the world. I'm sorry, but that, that's uh, it. Uh, so clarity. <laughs> The clarity of the water in that bottom right-hand photo is incredible. But it's true. I mean, it's not a Photoshop photo. It's just yes. real. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Uh, 
Now that's uh, the atoll of uh, Rangiroa on the top. So you can see the coral reef with those motu on some part of the coral reef. And you can see a turtle because this is uh, the marine uh, environment in the Tuamotu is really well preserved. And, and the fauna, they know that. So they're still living there and you can see them very easily. You don't need to dive very deep to see those animals. Mm. And you can see on the right side, uh, a typical uh, house of a pearl farm um, because they grow a lot of pearls in the Tuamotu. And, and, and that's what on the, one of the richness of the Tuamotu is uh, the black pearl of uh, Tuamotu. Is, is Rangaroa the largest at all? Yes, it's uh, 50 miles from east to west. Yes. It's huge. It's, I think it's the largest atoll in the world. Yeah. So as I said at the beginning, if you need to get more information, if you're sitting with your own boat to French Polynesia, you can uh, get online on yellowflagguide.com. This is a website that I manage. And we do edit uh, every two years, a stopover handbook in French Polynesia with it's not a cruising guide, it's really a welcome guide, but you find all of the useful uh, information and contacts that you may need. And you can download this brochure on our website. And you can also visit the tahititourism.com website uh, about all of our islands. Next. If I can find it, it keeps moving. <laughs> <laughs> and it's back to you, Trevor. Yes, so thank you, Stephanie. I'm absolutely bewildered because I've been so many times to Tahiti and never to any of those islands. So I think I put Tuamotu on the top of the list. And I think I know a boat that lives there that I might be able to go sailing on. So just to refresh uh, in closing the Tahiti Yacht Rally that we were running together with uh, multi Solutions and with Stephanie in October next year from 15 to 26, uh, subject of course to you know what, I'm not even gonna mention the word. Uh, we have six, six catamarans available and uh, we expect the group maybe to be 30 or 40 people if we are successful. And as I said to you earlier, uh, Stephanie will be with us. So if you want to discuss more with Stephanie, then you have to come on the rally or go and see her on your own boat, which is obviously the nicer way to go. And I said before, incorrectly, I apologize, but the most difficult to do, thing to do in Tahiti is to leave. And uh, I have now a very good understanding of uh, the mutiny on the bounty. Thank you so much. And now close uh, back to you, Greg, and to Rachel, any questions from anybody, please. Yes, so thank you very much, uh, uh, Trevor and Maggie and Sarah. That was very good. And Stephanie, fantastic to uh, hear your voice and uh, maybe you could try turning your camera on now if you wanted. Let me try. I think you have to do it because I That's, tried it previously, but I, I think, think Rachel, Rachel will give it a try. So um, we do have some questions. So I'm just going to uh, jump through them and, and have a chat. Hello, there you are. Um, Hello, Yaorana, everyone. Yaorana. Sorry, it's dark because it's already six, uh, it's almost seven here. So it's it's dark time. <laughs> okay, so uh, a couple of questions. First one, uh, this is from Dan and Dana. Uh, we've recently bought a boat in Tahiti. Where is the best place shop website to buy parts and water toys like paddle boards, etc.? Or is it better to buy the gear in New Zealand and courier, uh, courier it over? Thank you. I'll let you answer that, Steph. Well, uh, actually, the the freight uh, tr importing parts uh, since COVID is quite difficult or take a long time because we have less flights going from New Zealand to Tahiti. So same thing in the stopover handbook that I read on yellowflagguide.com, you'll find the um, contact details of Notispore, Sintering Marine, uh, and those um, ship chandler are specialized in nautical activities. So I guess that's where you could find them. Otherwise, downtown Papete, you've got some shops for surfers, like Quick, Quick Silver Shop or um, this kind of uh, surf shop where you can find some nautical gear. 
Very good. Good afternoon. This is from Mia. Uh, I've not bought it yet, but looked at cruising to the Polynesian Islands. For a private trip, what size or type of boat is best? Well, well it depend, depends on your budget. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, Stephanie, you sailed from France, from mainland France to French Polynesia when you... No, that, that's a legend. I, I bought my boat in Tahiti. I restored ah. it when I was working for Sunsail. And when my boat was... gave resignation to Sunsail and I started sailing to uh, the market and the but, but it was Pierre. Pierre sailed there, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> Yes. Just the legend of Stephanie. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Greg, so the, yeah, answer to the answer to that is it depends on your budget. I think what Trevor said is important at the beginning because of uh, a lot of the depth challenges and so on. It is a really good place to have uh, to sail or cruise on a catamaran. However, that doesn't mean that there aren't many, many people sailing around and enjoying the French Polynesian. Group yeah, and it depends. On it depends boat. on the itinerary they want to do. If they go to the Tuamotu, two, they really need to have a boat uh, equipped enough with uh, at least a water maker. If yeah. you sail yeah. the Society Island, you find place where you can find water in each island. But um, yeah, I'm a monohull sailor, but I rec I recognize the comfort of being sailing on a catamaran in our atolls and lagoon because then you can anchor very close to the reef in shallow water. And, and catamaran are great here. And the charter company, they've got a large range of choice of catamaran to rent. I should well, mention uh, so that. Mia, Mia has asked a range of questions there, but I gather, Mia, are you, I, maybe you could type in for me. Are you talking about a charter or are you talking about purchasing a boat to go and live aboard and sail? I think you may be talking about a charter. Well, I didn't maybe not properly understand the question of your. Yeah, um, no, I'm not. I'm not understanding it either. So I'll just wait to see if uh, if uh, Mia lets us know. But if it's for charter, then you for charter, can... most of the charter fleet now they've got. I'll say 95, 90 percent of their fleet are catamarans. Yes. Uh, and if you go um, with, you, if you want to buy a boat, islands. Uh, I'm a monohulls girl because you can tack easily, you can go upwind more easily with a monohull than a catamaran. But once again, I'm someone who sells without engine, so <laughs> maybe I'm not the, the right person <laughs> to answer this question. Okay, and then we've got our great friend John Hembrow has uh, been watching today's webinar and he uh, reiterated, he said, Bakarava is truly a must see destination, which is in the uh, Tuamotu group. We spent one month there when we crossed the Pacific. Extraordinary drift dives. It's a reason in itself to cross the Pacific. Thank you. And then uh, uh, Ian would like to know, does Trevor know? <laughs> I wonder why they're asking you this, Trevor. Does Trevor know the price of a bottle of wine in Tahiti? Well, it depends. <laughs> uh, but actually, and I, I'm not really sure. <laughs> But Stephanie can back me up here. The, you That's can buy reasonable French wine in Tahiti for how many euros, Steph? The basic one would be 20 euro. But now I'm going uh, to the market and I buy wine from New Zealand because I like New Zealand wine. <laughs> and you can buy a bottle of white wine of New Zealand for something like 30 euro here. Wow. wow. Okay. Expensive. All right. So I'm um, Liam, uh, who is uh, uh, one of our clients has asked, what's the best time of year to sail in, in Tahiti? And I'll let, uh, I can Steph. Know the answer, but I'll let Stephanie answer that. Well, if you can stay more than a year, that's better. But if you just have a couple of months, <laughs> <laughs> if you just have a couple of months, I'll say, um, Avoid July and August because we've got this trade wind called Mahamu in July and August that is sometimes quite strong, 25 knots for a couple of days. And, and my favorite period to sail will be March to June and September to November. Yeah, and then and December, I January, this is the rainy season and then it's quite humid and hot. It's maybe not the best I get used to it, but I know that people that are coming in December, they feel like it's too hot and too humid. And then it's an, in, it's an interesting point too, that maybe we didn't uh, highlight. 
the importation rules now for French Polynesia is uh, if you have a private catamaran that you've picked up at the factory in France and you've sailed across the Atlantic and done the Caribbean and then gone on through the uh, Panama and you're coming across, you can leave your yacht in French Polynesia for, for up to three years. No, sorry, case. Greg. But it has changed because of COVID. Ah, and of course. Because of COVID, they change it to two years. They reduce it to two, two years. years. Yes. So you can stay two years boat without having to import the boat. Yes. The issue will be more for the passenger on board. Correct. Because the visa that you've got is a tourist visa and is only three months if you're American or out of the EEC. Um, so then what we recommend is to go to the, your embassy before coming to French Polynesia and apply for a long-term visa that gives you one year visa in French Polynesia and you can renew your visa in French Polynesia for a second year. But you need to have it before you arrive. You won't be able to apply for the long-term visa once you are here. Very good, thank you. So three years is now two years for the boat. Yeah. Yep, okay, very good. Which is still longer than many other jurisdictions. You know, Absolutely. like. Uh, Schengen in terms of Mediterranean is 18 months and a, a lot of other jurisdictions around the Pacific are 12 months. So two years is still a great length of time. Greg, there's another thing that may be a question, but I didn't mention it specifically. It has to do with entry into French Polynesia from Australia, for example. Uh, Papietti has been open all this time and all you need is to have been in a green country for 14 days before you arrive and you have to be vaccinated. Um, no, that, that's not true anymore, Trevor. <laughs> oh, goodness me. So tell me, up, what's up the story? Today, today uh, I mean, the, the maritime um, borders of French Polynesia are closed. Really? But, yeah, they are closed, the maritime borders. But if you, when you are in Panama, let's say you're in Panama and you want to go to French Polynesia, you can try to get the authorization, but what we remark is that in reality, a lot of boats, they have been to sail to French Polynesia. And when you arrive, then they let you anchor because I mean, it's, it's uh, you, can, you can cross the entire South Pacific without stopover. But there are, well, we are doing a lot of lobbying to try to get the maritime borders open again, but it's still officially closed. Okay, so this is changing all the time, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Stephanie, you mean even Wind Spirit is not operating? Or? It, it's different because Wind Spirit is based in Tahiti and yes. people fly to Tahiti. So, there is yeah. no restriction to fly to Tahiti. There are restrictions to come in, the, in French Polynesia by boat. I'm sorry, I was talking about flying in. My, my apologies. Yeah. Flying in is easy. You can come yes. from everywhere in the world. If you are vaccinated, it's just easy. If you're not, then you have to do a quarantine. Yes. But if you are vaccinated, you can come and straight start your holidays in French Polynesia. Yes, thank you, Vitsnev. The hardest part is getting the approval from Australia to depart Australia. So understood. All right. You um, wouldn't want to go there now anyway, Greg, because <laughs> you haven't got an aeroplane anyway. Yeah, so now we've got another question or a statement from John. It's more of a comment. We had a wonderful trip with Trevor and Maggie in 2003 and very happy memories. Very enticing, uh, exciting to join with you. Oh, sorry, very enticing to join with you if possible. We went to the Marquesas and the atolls of Aranui 5, which was excellent. Best wishes, Trevor and Maggie from Nina and John. Oh, uh, Thank you. Yes, I'll, keep moving, I'll keep moving on. So Rick has just asked, what sort of cats are you planning, Trevor? And how many people on each cat is a question from Ross. Well, uh, I'm not allowed to, to mention the brand uh, because unfortunately uh, there's only one uh, Fontaine Peugeot yes. catamaran in charter in uh, Tahiti, but they are four cabin boats that we have hired. They are 45 feet long and uh, they are fully air conditioned and each cabin has its own ensuite. We very rarely ever go with more than six people on a boat. 
And you can you can mention the brands, Trevor. We don't mind. We sell all sorts of catamarans. We don't mind. And mono holes with the yacht sales co. The, the, the boat is a barley 4.5. Yep, understood. And that would be that's fine. And so you've you've uh working with a local charter operator there to pull together the yachts that you need to uh yeah. conduct the event. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because it used to be easy when it was when it was Stephanie and Greg helping you at Sunsail. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, look, that's fantastic. Uh, a good informative presentation. Obviously, uh, a mixture of uh, talking and communicating to those who are going to be cruising their own yachts in the area, combined with the fact that we wanted to uh, allow Mariner Boating to uh, promote and talk about the event that they're going to be conducting at the end of October 22. If you haven't been to French Polynesia, this is the way to do it. Um, I think one of the most important things you said there today, Stephanie, was that the best way to see French Polynesia and the islands, especially the Society Islands and the Tuamotos, is from on board a boat. So, yeah, it's uh, there are all those pictures of those beautiful hotels and overwater bungalows, but they can't move. The yacht can. So. A boat is an overwater bungalow that is changing um, yeah. place every day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. So listen, thank you very much. Um, um, I'm just trying to um, remember how to say goodbye to you in Tahitian. Nana. Lara. Nana. Nana. <laughs> uh, and Steph, right. we'll so, catch up on the phone, say, tomorrow. Yep, all good. So we'll we'll keep going and thank you everyone. We'll finish today's presentation with that. Thank you, Stephanie. And thank, thank you so much, uh, Greg. Thank you, Stephanie. Talk thank tomorrow. you too.